presentation that to have identify post-traumatic stress symptoms using uh, physiological cycles and artificial intelligence. So, hi, my name is Luis Antonio and I will present a little bit of my work during the Masters. And the title is Identify Post-Traumatic Stress Symptoms Using Physiological Signals and Artificial Intelligence. And these are the authors that helped and collaborated through this work. So this is the agenda of the presentation. And firstly, I will talk about the introduction. Then I will explain how the data was acquired. And I will also talk about the analysis that we performed and show the results. And lastly, I will make some final remarks. So introduction. Uh, the number of people in our society diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, has increased. A person with this diagnostic has suffered some traumatic event. And when this person remembers this event, he or she triggers uh, emotional and neurophysiological changes in his or her body. Such neurophysiological changes can be, for example, pericardia and tachycardia. Um, the correct diagnosis is not always a fast or trivial task because many disorders have common symptoms. The art artificial intelligence techniques, AI techniques, have helped specialists to prescribe more accurate and effective diagnostics. And the National Center for PTSD has developed the PCL4 scale questionnaire, and this questionnaire evaluates the impact of a um, traumatic event. And we use the PCLC variation of this scale, and C stands for recipients. There is another variation, this is PCLM for military. And we also use these cut points to determine the high PCL class and low PCL class. So the main goal of our work, we aim at finding new biomarkers to diagnose PTSD, analyzing physiological signals with AI techniques. So, in other words, uh, we apply AI techniques to predict the value of this PCL scale. And to do that, we use the physiological signals data. And now I will explain how the data was acquired. So, uh, we, we received this data set from Biomedical Institute here, from our university. And they made an experiment with 55 civilian volunteers exposed to a traumatic event related to violence. And in this slide I made a mistake. So 47 of these individuals have a low PCL class and 8 of them have a high PCL class. This was the mistake. And this experiment consists in an image visualization stage where each image was visualized um, for 6 seconds, followed by a fixation process from 6 to 8 seconds. And during this image visualization stage, the heart rate and skin conductance signals were collected. And at the end, the volunteers were, were asked to complete the PCL4 scale questionnaire. Um, this experiment has 64 images and they were divided into four categories. The first category is threat directed uh, towards, this is a, an image of a person holding a gun directed to the viewer of the image, and threat directed away, this is a person holding a gun directed to a third party, and a neutral directed towards, this is a person holding a camera, like in this example, or a microphone or an umbrella directed to the viewer and neutral directed away images. This is the same idea but directed to a third party. And now I will talk about the techniques that we use it in our data analysis. So supervised discretization and attribute selection. Uh, supervised discretization. And these techniques transform the numeric data into nominal data, defining or 
generating ranges. And we use it, the Weka machine learning software. And this software has a supervised discretization filter. But the problem that we faced was uh, this filter defined just a single range. Then we also tried the R language algorithm, but it did the same for our dataset. And we also tried the scikit-learn Python library, but it has only non-supervised discretization. So we want a supervised discretization because we want to take the class into account. So that was why we made or formed a manual supervised discretization using a criterion of up to five ranges. And this is an example of our manually supervised discretization for one of the attributes of the dataset. In attribute selection, this technique select a subset of attributes. And in our dataset, we have 10 attributes plus the at the class attribute, so the PCS score. Weka has an algorithm and it calls Ranker and it returns a relevance ranking according to some selected metric. In our case, in our work, we use the information gain metric. And we selected the four best subsets, um, the subsets that have the highest accuracy. So how do we did that? We, we made our analysis using just the first attribute of this ranking, then first and second, first, second, and third, and so on, until using all the attributes. And then we selected four best subsets, so those with highest accuracy. And classification analysis. We used these following algorithms in our analysis, so Nate Bayes, IMK, this is a MECA implementation for K nearest neighbors, and we varied the K parameter from 1 to 15. Uh, J48, this is also a MECA implementation of C4.5, and we varied the unpruned parameter choosing the values true and false. Random forest, sequential minimal optimization, SMO, this is a MECA implementation for support, support vector machines, SVMs. Voted per spectrum and locally weighted learning. And uh, as validation method, we use the stratified five fold cross validation. And we also use, use these three metrics to evaluate the results uh, accuracy, F measure, and area under rock curve. And an important thing to note is the baseline. Uh, in, in our scenario, the baseline consists into dividing the majority class by the total of instances. So our majority class, the low BCL, has 47 instances and the dataset has 55 instances. And we get this 85,45% uh, of baseline. And what means the baseline? The baseline means in our scenario that the classifier correctly classifies all instances of the majority class and incorrectly classifies all instances of the minority class. And what we want is to get an accuracy higher than the baseline. So that would mean that the classifier started to correctly classify uh, some instances of the minority class. And we also use the permutation test for validating the significance of the results. Uh, the permutation test is a technique of statistics and it generates n datasets shuffling the labels. We chose n equals to a thousand, so we performed a thousand iterations generating n and uh, generating a thousand datasets in alpha equals to 0.05. 5% to validate the significance. So what means this alpha value? It means that, that if up to 5% of the thousand data sets, in our case, so n data sets, have an accuracy greater than or equal to the accuracy of the original data set, then the result is significant. And uh, these are the results before and after the supervised discretization. And the table at, at the top 
um, shows the results for before the supervised spritization. And as we can see, only two of them got an accuracy higher than the baseline. In, in the other hand, after the supervised spritization, so at the bottom, the bottom, uh, only two of them got an accuracy lower or equals to the baseline. Our best uh, result was 96,36% of accuracy. And as we can see, the attribute selection has also collaborated to this result. The subset 6 in this uh, image uh, means that we use the subset with the first 6 attributes. And we also made a class balancing because our data set, did, because the majority class is almost six times bigger than the minority class. And these are the results before and after the supervised discretization. And as we can see, only one uh, result was better or rarer than the baseline. <coughs> and after the supervised specialization, five of them were better or greater than the baseline. But when we compare these results uh, without the class balancing, they didn't perform better. So this were, it, these were the best results, but uh, with class balancing, we didn't got better results. And even though the attribute selection has also collaborated in this case. So, the final remarks. Um, we got an increase of classifiers' performance through AI techniques. So, the best result was obtained with name base algorithm. And we got a 96,36% of accuracy. This was a um, huge increase of accuracy and as measure equals to 0 0.9636 and area under the curve equals to 0 0.9681. We also made this permutation test implementation for Beckham because it doesn't have uh, this possibility so to validate the significance. And as future works we already started with the implementation of a supervised discretization algorithm to solve our problem. So we, we made the manually uh, supervised discretization, but we know that this isn't a good uh, technique, strategy. Sorry. And a new execution of this experiment using the latest PCSK version would be very interesting. So, at this moment, the latest version is the 5 version, and we use the 4th version. And with this new execution, we could also increase the dataset size, because it has only 55 instances. Thank you very much for your attention. So, um, <coughs> you, uh, you mentioned in uh, previous some some previous slides that you use uh, five folds to cross validation. Yes. yes. Why it number five? Uh, have you an uh, uh, explanation? Okay. Or, uh, uh, we, because uh, why not ten folds cross validation? Yeah. Or, or twenty. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we we have fifty five instances and five. Uh, a five fold cross validation would perform better in this case because 55 we can divide it by five, not by 10. Yeah, um, um, also because our data set is, has a, a small size. So. Yeah. And do you mention that this, uh, you use an uh, unbalanced uh, data set? How, yes, the original. How unbalanced? So, uh, how unbalanced? Uh, do we have some positive and negative? Uh, how how balanced is, is uh, such a data set? Mm -hmm. So, as I told before, the minority class is almost six times uh, bigger than the 
majority class is six times bigger than the minority class. So for a seven with low PCL and eight with high PCL. Uh, do you want to uh, predict uh, uh, efficient of a treatment or or predict if the patient will uh, so you have this kind of uh, disease? Yes, um, this experiment has nothing to do with uh, treatment. So this is just or only the PCR battery of this scale. So we want to predict this value using the heart rate and skin contact and signals. Just that. So I have a question? Yes. So after you do that, you could just measure heart rate as uh, showing those pictures and you say, okay, you have low PCL, high PCL, or low PCL at all. No, uh, someone would have a PCL if this person um, was, um, if this person suffered some traumatic event. So, uh, the minimum value is 70, and the maximum is um, I think so, so it's a question of scale. You use this as, as a predictor. That's that's the point. Mm -hmm. On general operations, so you just show the picture and say, In a controlled environment, maybe. This is the end of our workshop. I would like to invite you all for a picture here with all the group together. And then we're going to celebrate our 15th, 16th anniversary. <laughs> Thank you.